This is the Carpathian Storyteller Podcast at carpathianstoryteller.com. Enjoy! Youth without age and life without death. A Romanian fairy tale. Part 2. When he stopped here to rest, the horse said, You must know, master, that we are at the land of the woodpecker fairy, who is so wicked that nobody can enter her domain without being murdered. She was once a woman, but the curse of her parents, whom she angered by her disobedience, turned her into a woodpecker. She is with her children now, but you will meet her tomorrow in yonder forest. She will come to kill you, She is terribly big, but don't be frightened. Hold the bow ready to pierce her with an arrow, and keep your sword and lance in hand, so that you can use them in case of need. Then they went to rest, taking turns in watching. At dawn, the next morning they prepared to pass through the forest. The prince saddled and bridled the horse, drew the girths tighter than usual, and mounted. Suddenly he heard a tremendous crashing. Make ready, master, said the horse. The woodpecker fairy is coming. As she approached, she moved so fast that she tore the trees down. But the horse leaped upwards like the wind, so it was almost over her. And the prince shot off one of her feet with an arrow. Just as he was about to discharge the second arrow, she cried, Stop, my young hero, I will do you no harm. And seeing that he did not believe her, she gave him the promise written with her own blood. Your horse cannot be killed, my young hero, she added. It is enchanted. If it hadn't been for that, I would have roasted and eaten you. Now that until today no mortal man has ventured to cross my boundaries as far as this, a few bold wings who dared to make the trial reached the plain where you saw so many bones. They now went to the fairy's house where she entertained them as guests. But while sitting at the table enjoying the banquet, the woodpecker fairy moaned with pain. So the prince pulled the foot he had shot of out of the traveling bag where he had put it, fastened it on, and it instantly healed. The hostess, in her joy, kept open the house for three days and three nights, and begged the emperor's son to choose one of her daughters, all three of whom were beautiful as fairies, for his wife. He would not do that, but told her what he was seeking, and she replied, With your horse and your heroic courage, I believe you will succeed. After three days and three nights had passed, the prince prepared to continue his journey and departed. He rode on and on and on. The road seemed to grow longer and longer. But when he had finally crossed the frontiers of the woodpecker's fairy's kingdom, he entered the beautiful meadow, one side of which was covered with blooming plants, but the other was scorched. The prince asked why the grass was singed, and the horse answered, We are now in the domain of the scorpion witch. She is the woodpecker's fairy sister, but they are both so wicked that they can't live together. Their parents' curse has fallen upon them, and so, as you see, they have become monsters. Their enmity goes beyond all bounds. They are always trying to get possession of each other's lands. When this one is very angry, she spits fire and pitch. She must have had some quarrel with her sister, and to drive her out of her kingdom, has burned the grass of which she was standing. She is even worse than her sister, and has three heads. We will rest a while now and be ready at the first peep of dawn tomorrow. The next day they prepared themselves, 
just as they expected to meet the woodpecker fairy, and set out. Soon they heard a howling and rustling unlike any other thing you know before. Make ready, master, the scorpion witch is coming. The scorpion witch, with one joined the sky and the other on the earth, approached like the wind, spitting fire as she came, but the horse but the horse darted upwards and swiftly as an arrow, and the rustled over her little on on the side. The hero shot an arrow, and one of her heads fell. But when he was going to strike off another, the scorpion witch entreated him to forgive her. She would not do him no harm, and to convince him of this, she gave him her promise written in her own blood. Like the woodpecker fairy, she entertained the prince, who returned her head, which grew on again, and at the end of three days and three nights, he resumed his travels. When the hero and his horse had reached the boundaries of the scorpion witch's kingdom, they hurried on without resting, till they came to a field covered with flowers, where there reigned perpetual spring. Every blossom was remarkably beautiful and filled with sweet, intoxicating fragrance. A gentle breeze faint them all. Then remained here to rest, but the horse said, We have arrived so far, successfully, master. But we still have one great peril to undergo, and if the Lord helps us to conquer it, we shall really be valiant heroes. A short distance further on is the palace where dwell youth without age and life without death. It is surrounded by high, dense forest, where roam all the wild animals in the world, watching it day and night. They are very numerous, and it is almost beyond the bound of possibility to get through the wood by fighting them. We must try, if we can, to jump over them. After resting about two days, they prepared to continue their journey, and the horse, holding its breath, said, Buckle my girth as tight as you can, and when you have mounted, hold fast to my name. Buckle my girth as tight as you can, and when you have mounted, hold fast to my mane, and press your feet close to my neck, that you may not hinder me. The prince mounted, and in a moment they were close to the forest. Master, said the horse, this is the time that the wild beasts are fed. They are all collected together. Now we'll jump over. Forward, replied the handsome prince, and may the Lord have mercy on us. They flew upward and saw the palace, which glittered so that it would have been easier to look at the sun. They passed over the forest, and just as they were descending at the palace steps, one of the horse's hooves lightly touched the top of a tree, which put the whole woods in motion. The wild animals began to howl till it was enough to make one's hair bristle. They hastily alighted, and if the mistress of the palace had not been outside feeding her chickens, they would certainly have been killed. She spared their lives out of pure pleasure, for she had never seen before a human being. Restraining the savage beasts, she sued them and sent them back to their haunts. She was a tall, slender, lovely fairy, quite too beautiful. When the young hero saw her, he stood still as though turned to stone. But as she gazed him, she patient him and said, Welcome, my handsome prince. What do you seek here? We seek youth without age and life without death. Then he dismounted from his horse and entered the palace, where he found two other ladies, both of the same age, the elder sisters of the first one. He began to thank the fairy for having delivered him from danger, but she and her sisters to show their joy, had a handsome banquet served in golden dishes, 
They gave the horse liberty to graze whatever he chose and after made it acquainted with all the wild beasts so that it might roam about the forest in peace. The ladies entreated the prince to stay with them, saying that it was so tiresome to be alone. He did not wait to be asked a second time, but accepted the offer, with the satisfaction of a man who has found precisely what he sought. If you wish to listen longer, listen to part 3. We really hope you enjoyed today's story as much as we enjoyed telling it. So if, if you want to hear more stories, subscribe to our channel. We tell stories twice a week and for a complete transcription of today's episode and articles about Carpathian traditions and places to travel to, visit us at carpathianstoryteller.com. There you can comment about your favorite stories and what stories you know from the Carpathian lands that we should translate and also, you can support us with small donations. We really appreciate them. There you can also find links to a lot of social media such as Facebook, Twitter, and also all the places you can listen to us. We are available on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, YouTube, and many more. From everybody here at Carpathian Storyteller, we wish you a magical day.